Welcome to the Boston Echo Boards Review Course. Today we will be presenting another sample question for the review course. In this question, four answer choices will be displayed for about 30 seconds, then you will be asked to make a selection. After that, the correct answer will be highlighted, followed by a discussion regarding the concept that was presented in that sample question. Enjoy. So here's the clinical scenario and the stem on which the subsequent question is going to be based. A patient with moderate mitral regurgitation is undergoing coronary artery bypass graft surgery. And during the course of the surgery, the continuous wave Doppler profile of his mitral regurgitation jet changes from profile A to profile B. So the correct answer to this question is that the reason for the change of the profile of mitral regurgitation jet from panel A to B is increase in the severity of mitral regurgitation to severe intensity. Now let's go over this explanation in a greater detail. So let's go over the choices of this question first before we uh, go over the explanation of the concept that is being presented. So the profile of the continuous wave Doppler of the mitral regurgitation jet not only represents the intensity based on the, you know, the grayscale, uh, the duration of the MR jet, whether it's early, mid, or late systolic or holosystolic, but also the manner in which the pressure equilibrates between the left ventricle and the left atrium. So the mitral regurgitation starts when the left ventricular pressure exceeds uh, the left atrial pressure and it continues until the pressure equilibrates between left, left ventricle and the left atrium. So the panel on the left shows a, a very high velocity jet, about four meters per second, and then the gradually, but as the MR proceeds, the pressure equilibrates between the left ventricle and the atrium. The one on the right demonstrates what is uh, called as the V-wave cutoff sign, which means that so much volume goes in in the early part of the mitral regurgitation, which means the intensity of the MR or the volume gets into the left atrium so quickly that the, there's a rapid equilibration of pressure between the left ventricle and left atrium, and therefore further mitral regurgitation immediately stops. So while it looks like a smaller jet, but the, the shape of the mitral regurgitation jet represents the manner and the rapidity of the equilibration of the pressure between the left ventricle and left atrium. So this patient obviously has had increase in the severity of MR, so more volume is going from the left ventricle to the left atrium, causing a rapid equilibration representing the V-wave cutoff sign. A decrease in the regurgitant volume is counterintuitive, so that's incorrect. Hypovolemia, again, is, is incorrect. It doesn't have anything to do with this thing. A decrease in the left atrial pressure is, is also not, not a relevant uh, 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 choice, because actually there's an increase in the left atrial pressure, and finally, the most appropriate choice responsible for this change in the profile from A to B is increase in the severity of mitral regurgitation jet. Now we will go over uh, this uh, concept and demonstrate further clinical changes in this patient's uh, clinical profile. Looking at these uh, two uh, graphics carefully, there are the numerous subtle signs uh, that can tell you that the MR severity has increased. Uh, as you can see, that this uh, signal uh, is not as intense as the signal on the right side, so that alone just tells you that more MR, uh, uh, MR is happening and greater number of RBCs are crossing the mitral valve from the left ventricle to the left atrium. More importantly, as you can see in this one, uh, that this is kind of an impaired relaxation pattern with both E and A waves being equal. However, in this specific scenario, you can see that it has become predominantly uh, an E-dominant pattern of mitral inflow, which implies that there's a greater volume going through the mitral valve. So uh, an atrial uh, predominant pattern almost excludes a severe MR, 
And in this case, it's while it's not entirely an atrial dominant pattern, but it does demonstrate some impaired relaxation. But on this side, as you can see, uh, that there is a significant uh, E-dominant uh, transmitral flow pattern implying that there's greater volume going on in there. At the same time, you can see that the heart rate here is 57 beats per minute. This is 80 beats per minute. Obviously, the patient is tachycardic or hemodynamically unstable, and uh, therefore, uh, the patient is having um, uh, becoming ischemic and therefore having uh, greater mitral regurgitation. So, uh, all things being equal, the intensity, uh, the, uh, the tachycardia, and the change in the transmitral flow pattern from uh, ENA is being equal to a predominantly uh, e dominant uh, mitral inflow also signifies that the severity of mitral regurgitation has increased. So in the final analysis, as you can see, that the uh, video on the left shows uh, less mitral regurgitation, while we reported that the patient had moderate mitral regurgitation, but uh, we're not exactly catching this uh, jet as, uh, as well as we should. And it demonstrates a normal pulmonary venous inflow pattern with uh, S, D waves, and atrial flow reversal. And later on, as we go along, the patient develops severe mitral regurgitation and you can see that besides the, uh, the increase in jet area, the vena contractor, there's also a systolic reversal in the left upper pulmonary vein implying that the patient has a severe mitral regurgitation. Uh, predictably, uh, the one on the left, while it doesn't represent this mitral regurgitation in this specific video, demonstrates a broad jet, an E-dominant pattern, and the intensity not that high as is in this specific case, when the patient has severe mitral regurgitation, as you can see, that there is higher intensity. Uh, there's also uh, uh, predominantly E pattern, and there's uh, E wave dominant pattern, and there's that uh, specific um, uh, V wave cutoff sign implying severe mitral regurgitation. Well, this brings us to the conclusion of this uh, sample question of the Boston Echo Boards Review course. It was a slightly complicated and a little advanced concept uh, regarding the assessment of mitral regurgitation, but I think it's an important conceptual point to concentrate on the global information that is available to the echocardiographer and not merely sometimes the jet area or some other uh, echocardiographic parameter. I hope you enjoyed this one, and uh, please stay tuned for the online launch of the Boston Echo Boards Review uh, course for preparation of your Echo Boards exams. Enjoy and have good luck.